Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to do the exercise 1a on Clark's completion analog formula of the axiomatical characterization part of the course answer set solving in practice. So here we have our program P that I have just copied it here. And the first thing we have to do is to find the Clark's completion of the program. Then for this, we will have to write an equivalence for each of the atoms that we have. So for A, we have we'll have A if only if B and E or not T. B and not T or not T. Now for B, there's only one rule, then it will be basically we will do this. B if and only if not C. For C, oops, we have these two rules, so then we will have C if and only if D and not T e or not A. D and not T e or not A. And then for the D, we have that it will be true because we have this fact here, right? So D if and only if true, and given that true always holds, D will always hold. Good, and then don't forget that we also have the E here, so then we have that E if and only if false, right? Because there is no rule that can give us E, so then there's no reason for E being true, then E is going to be false. Good, then the next step here is to find the positive dependency graph of the program. And this is very easy. So we have here this rule that says A, B, and something else. So then there's a, an, an edge between B and A. Then here there are no positive atoms in the body, but here we have this. So then there's an edge between C and D. Right, and the and the arrows here follow the same direction as in the rules. And then here there are no more positive bodies. So if you want just to do this, you can delete the negative elements here from the bodies, and then we just see that we have only these two, right? And this is what we have written here. And now just to write it mathematically, like in the slides, we have this graph whose edges are, okay, here I have forgotten to put the E because there's E is also a, a, a node of the graph, but there are no edges going to or going out from E. So we have the nodes are A, B, C, D, and E. And the set of edges contains just B, A, and DC, right? And then we close it here. And yeah, then you can also see here we have BE, BA, and here we have DC, here we have DC. Okay, then the loops, here it's very easy. There are no loops. There is no, you can, we can never go from one node following the arrows to itself, right? We can go from B to A, but there's no way then to go back from the A to the B. And similarly, we can go from D to C, but there's no way to go back then to the, to the D. Then the set of loops is empty, and then the set of loop formulas is also empty. Good, so then we have done these parts already, the positive dependency graph, the loops, and the loop formulas, and now we just have to find the models of the completion, which are called the supported models. And for this, we are going to be reasoning over this uh, completion formula. So here we have that E, if and only if, false. Then given that false doesn't hold, E cannot hold either, so we know E is going to be false. I will write it like this using the symbol of classical negation. And with a similar reasoning, we get that D is true, right? Then I will say here that we have already, we are done in a way with this rule and with another, this another. And now here, let's see, we have the D and we know that not E holds, then C must hold, right? Because we have that these two hold. So then this is true, 
And given that we have this arrow, then C must also be true. Now, we have that B, if and only if C is not true, then if C is true, then B must be false, right? Because if B was true, then we should have not C. Then the only option to satisfy this equivalence is that the B is false. And let's see here. Okay, now we have that the B is false, so then this um, this conjunction doesn't hold. And here it says or not D, but D is true, right? Because we had it from this fact. So then this doesn't hold, then the A has to be false. Okay, and then what this means is that the there's a unique supported model that just consists of the atoms C and D. And um, the stable models of P, remember it here. Uh, so first we had that every uh, stable model is supported. So then if there's some stable model, it must be CD. And uh, what else was here? So if X is a supported model, then it is a stable model if and only if it satisfies the loop formula. And given that the set of loop formulas is empty, then this satisfies all the loop formulas because there are none of them. So then we know that this is also a stable model, right? So another way to see it is that given that the program has no loops, we say that the program is tight. Hence, the supported models are also stable. And now just something that I didn't do before. Let's let's go and check here again whether we satisfy all the all the equivalences. So from here clearly we have made E false, so we are fine. Here we have made D true, so we are fine. Then here C is true, and we must have one of these conjuncts true. And for example, this not A is true, but this also D and not E is also true, so we are fine. B is true. Then we must have that not C should also, sorry, B is false. So then we must have that not C is false. Then C must be true. This is the case. And here we have that A is false. So none of these should hold. And this doesn't hold because B is false. And this doesn't hold because D is true. Good. So then we know we have satisfied. And also something that you could check now, if you, given that you know that, um, this is the stable model. Given that we have said that this is the stable model of the program, we could come here up and check whether this is what we would get reasoning simply about the program. So we get the fact D from here. E must be false because there's no rule for it. Then with D and not E, we should derive the C. And then we cannot derive the B because we have the C. Um, about this rule, we don't care because we have already derived the C from there. And now we only have to check whether the, the, we derive the A. And from this rule, we cannot derive it because we have here the fact C. And from here, given that the, the B, we cannot derive it, there's no way to get the A. Hence, what we would get is C and D. Okay. So normally, uh, it can be the case, not normally, but at least it can be the case that finding the stable model, sorry, is a bit uh, involved and, and really you don't win much just doing this check in the end, but in this case, it was just easy to do it. Good. So this was all for this exercise 1A. I hope you have understood it and you have enjoyed. So see you in another video. Ciao.